Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you, Max. Wonderful start. You should know that Max has been one of the strongest supporters of the Tata Cornell program from the very, very beginning. He was chair of the interview committee that selected me. So if something goes wrong, <laughs> he'll get into trouble on that one. But since I've been here, every time we needed something, when every time we had uh, uh, some problem to be solved or something to get from the administration or advice on where to go, Max has always been there. So Max, thank you so much for doing that, for helping us get through uh, the last four years. Max pretty much gave most of the speech I wanted to give. So, <laughs> so I'm going to be a little bit more um, retrospective. Uh, many of you here, except for Maureen, were not here when the program started. And of course, Mary Catherine. Um, everybody else has come after. So if you think about 2013, 2013 was a year where we had just one, two research scholars, Maureen and Swamya Gupta, and uh, myself and Mary Catherine pretty much running the whole show, and oh, Kate, um, Katie Ricketts. Since then, you know, if you look today at the room, and nowadays I joke that when I give a talk, I don't need to worry about an audience because I can bring my own team <laughs> to sit in the room and give a talk and, and not be worried about having blank spaces in the room. Uh, so that's been a tremendous change that we've had. Right now with 15 uh, schol PhD scholars and four postdoctoral fellows, um, it really feels like we've got a thriving operation going and that's something really exciting for us. But what's also really exciting is um, when we started this program, we took a bet. We took a bet on saying, you know, students can do real life research and can do rigorous field research and at the same time meet the academic standards that are required to get a PhD at Cornell. Uh, that was a bet because it's not common to have PhD students go off for a year and, and really do design and do a program from scratch uh, in, in very difficult rural settings. Uh, but we found that over the last few years, um, we, we read the mood right. We found that people were willing to take this bet and people were willing to come back with solid PhDs. And today, we've got four students on the ground and a fifth on her way, uh, and these students are doing everything from bringing in a new crop, an orange flesh sweet potato, a sweet potato crop that's rich in vitamin A, to looking, well, Maureen will talk more about the work she did on goats, but you know, aflatoxin and the contamination of aflatoxin in food systems, and what does that mean for nutrition and health, a tremendously important topic. The impact of bringing clean drinking water systems into rural areas. The, the conflict that women have between time for agriculture and time for cooking and feeding their families and what that means in terms of uh, overall uh, consumption of food but also the nutrition uh, status of families when you face those kinds of uh, tremendous trade-offs. And then, of course, the issue of what, of sanitation, uh, access to toilets, and whether improving access to toilets actually allows people to use toilets, and then the interactions between toilets and health, etc. These are tremendously important topics, huge topics. And as a society, we've been grappling with these issues for a long time. But to have Cornell PhD students go spend a year in India and try to address these problems and come back 
with not only high quality research, but research that can be published in the best of journals and to get uh, recognition for this work uh, is something that I'm really gratified that we're able to do it and that we have uh, a constant steam, uh, stream of students who are willing to come in and do this type of work. Because it's not easy, but it's being done. And that's something that I'm really grateful and also very excited as we look to the future of this program. We are now at a level of having, we're almost at our sustainable level of 16 PhD students. We've, we're short by one, but that won't be a problem by next year. So my vision is that over time we'll be on this rotating scheme of having four students coming in each year and four students leaving each year. Uh, and so that eventually we'll get there. We're, we're sort of on that track. But what's also interesting is that this is not just an Indian student program. Obviously, given the research on India and all that, you do have a large number of Indian students in the program, but we have a significant number of students that are from outside of India, American students and other students that are in increasingly interested in this program and are willing to spend that time in India. And for American students doing the same sort of work in rural Indian settings is obviously even more complicated. But we found that the students who have gone out there and the students who are there now have not only taken on this challenge, um, but also have gained tremendously from this. I think students who come back from India after they do their one year of work have a, a dramatic life-changing experience. Because after that, it, things are not the same anymore. You've actually seen how poor people live and how the poor manage their lives and, and everything associated with them. And, and that has a tremendous change in the way you think about international agriculture, you think about international development, et cetera. That's the value of this program, I think, in the end. It's not just the science that comes in, but the way it changes your own attitude to the future. I'm getting a five minute sign there. Um, I want to take a, a couple of minutes to say uh, we've had a tremendous staff here. Uh, over the years, because the program has grown so much, we've had to also add to the management structure of the program. So as you know, Bhaskar Mitra is our, our man in Mumbai, running much of what we do there. But having Matthew Abraham join us as an assistant director also helps add to the work that's being done. Um, the, among the administrative staff this year, Mary Catherine was recognized with the Core Values Award, which was given by Cal. So that's a tremendous <laughs> accomplishment for us. I'd like to say that a lot of what we do, uh, we would not be able to do without strong partnerships in India. The NGO partners, academic partners that we have, and one of our strongest partners is the Tata Institute of Social Sciences. And Professor Parsuraman, the director of that institute, has been a major champion for this program and has been a major supporter of the work that we're doing, but also integrating their program, their institute with us. So this year we did this joint course where we simulcasted a, a classroom from Cornell into Mumbai and into Nanjing. And we had students in the Tata Institute of Social Sciences and students in the Nanjing Agriculture University taking the same class that Cornell students were taking. That was pretty incredible. And they were able to do joint exercises across the three countries and, and had joint working papers across the three countries. This was the first year we tried this internationalization experience. And it works so well that we now have two other universities who want to join in. And so we're now trying to figure out how to look at this in the future. One last thing I want to talk about is the Gates Foundation grant that we got for Tarina. 
its technical assistance and research for uh, India's nutrition and agriculture. This, this grant has actually allowed us to scale up our work tremendously and bring in a whole set of new partners and expand our, uh, our work across several states in India. And it's also made this idea of food systems and diversifying food systems outside of staple crops and looking at more nutritious food systems, a much more common discussion that's happening in India today. And the work we're doing through that grant has helped a lot. But I want to recognize Megan Witwer. Megan. Uh, without Megan's efforts, we wouldn't have been able to make this grant possible. And she's been working long hours and working across time zones and bringing all the various actors together in, in, in pulling together the, the grant um, promised milestones and the activities that go together with that, etc. We are now at the second year of this grant, and as we look over the next two years, I can see a tremendous impact of this work we are doing with our Indian partners, with Cornell students and others from Cornell helping us, Mark Constas working with us in helping put this, put the Cornell perspective to a, a real problem of getting the Indian food systems to be more nutrition sensitive. So I'm really excited about the future. And I'm, next year is going to be our fifth year. And as we get to our fifth year, what we want to do is to have a whole series of celebrations through the year. Bring in distinguished speakers, have all kinds of workshops and conferences, etc. And really bring the concept of uh, improved nutrition through food and food systems much more broadly across this campus. So we, we want to go from just thinking about our program as an India program to thinking about our program as what we've learned in India and how can that be used in, in other places, in other countries, etc. So thank you very much. Thank you, Max. Thank you all. Thank you.